Imagine receiving an email. It seems completely harmless. You're sitting at your desk, perhaps sipping on your morning coffee, and you hear that familiar notification sound. You glance at your screen and see a new message in your inbox. The sender appears to be someone you trust, perhaps a colleague or a friend. The name is familiar and you feel a sense of comfort. After all, why would someone you know send you something harmful? The subject line is intriguing, maybe a report you were expecting or attempting offer. It catches your eye immediately and you feel compelled to open it. Curiosity gets the better of you. You open the email and see an attached PDF file. It looks legitimate, just like any other document you've received countless times before. There's no reason to suspect anything unusual. Clicking on it seems perfectly safe, right? Wrong. This is where the danger lies. The moment you click, you've unknowingly opened the door to potential disaster. This, my friends, is how easily we can fall prey to the cunning tactics of hackers. In just a few clicks, your entire digital world can be turned upside down. What you don't know is that this innocent-looking PDF is actually a Trojan horse. It's designed to deceive you, to make you lower your guard. Hidden within its digital pages lies malicious code, ready to pounce the moment you open it. This code can execute a series of harmful actions without your knowledge. This is not magic, but the cunning exploitation of vulnerabilities, often in the software we use every day. These vulnerabilities are like open windows in your house, inviting intruders in. Hackers are masters of deception. They spend countless hours perfecting their craft, learning the ins and outs of the systems they aim to infiltrate. They understand human psychology and exploit our trust and curiosity. They know that we are more likely to click on something that appears familiar or intriguing. Their goal is to bypass your defenses and gain a foothold within your system. Once inside, they can steal sensitive information, install more malware, or even take control of your entire network. And in the world of cybersecurity, knowledge is your strongest shield. Understanding how these attacks work is the first step in protecting yourself. Let's delve into the world of cyber attacks and understand how this seemingly simple act of opening a PDF can lead to a full-blown system compromise. We'll look at real-world examples and break down the techniques used by cyber criminals. We'll explore the tools and techniques hackers use, from phishing emails to sophisticated malware. You'll learn how these tools are deployed and the signs to watch out for. And most importantly, how you can protect yourself from becoming their next victim. By staying informed and vigilant, you can build a robust defense against these digital threats. So, let's arm ourselves with knowledge and stay one step ahead of the hackers. To orchestrate these digital heists, hackers rely on an array of sophisticated tools. These tools are the bread and butter of their operations, enabling them to infiltrate, manipulate and control systems with precision. The digital landscape is vast, and so is the arsenal at a hacker's disposal. From frameworks that provide command and control capabilities to tools that generate malicious code, the variety is staggering. One such tool is the Empire Framework, a post-exploitation framework that provides attackers with a powerful command and control infrastructure. This framework is designed to be modular, allowing hackers to load various modules that can perform different tasks. Whether it's gathering information, executing commands, or maintaining persistence on a compromised system, Empire has it all. Think of it as the hacker's control panel, allowing them to remotely manipulate your compromised system. With Empire, a hacker can execute commands on the target machine, upload and download files, and even create new user accounts. It's like having a remote control for someone else's computer, giving the attacker full access to the system. Coupled with Empire is Starkiller, a graphical user interface that simplifies the use of Empire. Starkiller makes it easier for hackers to interact with the Empire framework, providing a user-friendly interface that abstracts away the complexities of the command line. This means that even those who are not well-versed in command line operations can still effectively use Empire. Starkiller provides a user-friendly way to manage and interact with compromised systems, even for those who may not be command line ninjas. It offers features like drag and drop functionality, real-time feedback, and detailed logs of all actions performed. This makes it an invaluable tool for both novice and experienced hackers alike. And then there's the donut shellcode generator. This tool is particularly interesting because it allows hackers to create shellcode, which is a small piece of code that acts as a payload. Shellcode is often used in exploits to execute arbitrary code on a target system. 
This tool creates shellcode, a small piece of code that acts as a payload. This payload is the actual malicious software that gets injected into your system. Once the shellcode is executed, it can perform a variety of malicious actions, such as opening a backdoor, downloading additional malware, or stealing sensitive information. This payload is the actual malicious software that gets injected into your system. Donut is particularly crafty as it can package this shellcode in a way that can bypass many security measures. It uses various techniques to evade detection, such as encryption and obfuscation, making it difficult for security software to identify and block the malicious code. Donut is particularly crafty as it can package this shellcode in a way that can bypass many security measures. This makes it a favorite among hackers who need to ensure their payloads reach their targets without being intercepted. The ability to bypass security measures is crucial for the success of any cyber attack, and Donut excels in this regard. These tools, while powerful in the wrong hands, are not inherently malicious. They can be used for legitimate purposes like penetration testing to identify and fix vulnerabilities. Ethical hackers, also known as white hat hackers, use these same tools to test the security of systems and help organizations improve their defenses. They can be used for legitimate purposes like penetration testing to identify and fix vulnerabilities. By simulating attacks, ethical hackers can uncover weaknesses in a system's security and provide recommendations for strengthening it. This proactive approach helps prevent real attacks and protect sensitive data from being compromised. However, in the hands of a skilled hacker, they become dangerous weapons. The same tools that can be used to protect systems can also be used to exploit them. It's a double-edged sword, and the outcome depends on the intentions of the person wielding the tools. In the world of cybersecurity, knowledge is power, and the tools of the trade are the keys to that power. The first step for the attacker is to set up their arsenal. This involves a meticulous process of gathering and configuring various tools and software that will be used in the attack. The attacker needs to ensure that everything is in place and functioning correctly before they can proceed. This preparation phase is crucial as it lays the foundation for the entire operation. They would deploy the Empire Server, their command center for controlling compromised systems. The Empire Server is a powerful tool that allows the attacker to manage multiple compromised machines from a single interface. It provides a range of functionalities, including the ability to execute commands, transfer files and gather information from the victim's machines. Think of it as setting up a base of operations. Just like a military command center, the Empire server acts as the central hub from which the attacker can coordinate their activities. It is the nerve center of the operation, providing the attacker with the ability to control and monitor their targets. This server will be used to issue commands to and receive information from the victim's machine. The attacker can use it to deploy additional tools, gather intelligence, and maintain control over the compromised systems. The communication between the Empire server and the victim's machine is often encrypted, making it difficult for security teams to detect and intercept. Next comes the configuration of Starkiller. Starkiller is a graphical user interface that simplifies the attacker's job. It provides a user-friendly interface for managing the Empire server and its various modules. With Starkiller, the attacker can easily navigate through the different functionalities of the Empire server without needing to use complex command line tools. This user-friendly interface will be the attacker's window into your system. It allows them to see what is happening on the compromised machines in real time, execute commands, and monitor the status of their tools. The intuitive design of Starkiller makes it easy for the attacker to manage their operation efficiently. It allows them to easily navigate through your files, execute commands, and ultimately take control. The attacker can browse through the victim's file system, search for sensitive information, and execute malicious commands to further compromise the system. The ability to remotely control the victim's machine gives the attacker a significant advantage. The attacker will use Donut to create a malicious payload. Donut is a tool that allows the attacker to generate shellcode payloads that can be injected into the victim's process. These payloads are designed to exploit specific vulnerabilities in the victim's software, allowing the attacker to gain control over the system. This payload is carefully crafted to exploit a specific vulnerability in your system, like a security flaw in your PDF reader software. The attacker will analyze the target system to identify potential vulnerabilities and then create a payload that can exploit these weaknesses. 
the goal is to execute the payload on the victim's machine without being detected. This is the digital equivalent of finding a weak point in a fortress wall. Just as a physical attacker would look for a weak spot in a fortress to breach its defenses, the digital attacker looks for vulnerabilities in the target system to gain access. Once the weak point is identified, the attacker can exploit it to infiltrate the system. With the tools prepped and the payload ready, the attacker lies in wait, ready to deploy their digital snare. The attacker will monitor the target system, waiting for the right moment to launch their attack. This could be when the victim opens a malicious email attachment or visits a compromised website. Their next move, finding a way to slip past your defenses and deliver the malicious PDF into your hands. This could involve sending a phishing email with a malicious attachment, exploiting a vulnerability in a web application, or using social engineering techniques to trick the victim into executing the payload. The attacker will use any means necessary to bypass your defenses and achieve their objective. Section 4. The listener awaits, opening the door for the attacker. Before sending out the malicious PDF, the attacker sets up a listener on their Empire server. This listener is like an open ear, waiting for a signal from the victim's machine. Once the malicious PDF is opened and the payload is executed, it will establish a connection back to this listener. Think of it like this. The attacker sends out a scout, the malicious PDF, to infiltrate your system. The scout's mission is to establish a secret communication channel back to the attacker's base, the listener. This channel will be used to send further instructions and receive sensitive data. The listener waits patiently, ready to spring into action the moment it detects a successful connection from the victim's machine. It's a crucial component of the attack acting as the bridge between the attacker and their target. Section 5. The Trojan Horse Delivering the Payload The malicious PDF armed with the hidden payload is ready. Now the attacker needs to deliver it to you, the unsuspecting target. This is where social engineering comes into play. The attacker might craft a phishing email designed to trick you into opening the attachment. The email could be disguised as an invoice, a shipping confirmation, or even a message from your bank. They might exploit current events or your personal interests to make the email seem more convincing. The goal is to pique your curiosity or create a sense of urgency, prompting you to click on the attachment without thinking twice. Once you open the PDF and the vulnerability is exploited, the hidden payload springs into action. It will then connect back to the attacker's listener, establishing a backdoor into your system.